Greetings everyone, and today I'm checking out another extremely bright aperture Chinese 50mm lens, the 7 Art Sands 50mm f1.05, an unusual maximum aperture. It's a full frame lens for mirrorless camera systems, so it'll be available for the usual big four, Sony E, Canon RF, Nikon Z, and L mount cameras. At 400 US dollars, it's about an average price for a lens of this kind, although if used properly, it can of course get you some absolutely stunning images which look anything but average with very deeply out of focus backgrounds, while also having that useful 50mm focal length for everyday and even landscape photography. And of course, it gathers plenty of light for shooting in very dark conditions. It's almost twice as bright as an f1.4 lens. The key disadvantage, of course, is that 7 Artisans lenses currently do not have autofocus. It is a totally manual lens, and that will definitely slow down your shooting, particularly when working with such a tiny depth of field, or trying to capture a moving subject, you can forget about that when you're manually focusing. That's the price you have to pay, though, for a lens like this to be affordable. I'd like to thank 7 Artisans for sending me a copy of this lens for testing, although as usual, this will be a totally independent review. I'll be checking out its strengths and weaknesses. Let's take a look at its build quality first. This is a completely typical, metal-bodied, inexpensive Chinese lens in virtually every way, uh, except for the very nice carry bag it comes in, which you saw at the beginning of the video. Tons of metal is used in this lens's construction, well not tons, although at 600 grams it certainly does have a little weight to it. At the rear of the lens is the focus ring, which turns very smoothly and a little heavily, meaning you won't accidentally send it out of focus. However, I do wish it turned a little further than it does to offer a bit more precision. When you change focus as you can see here, you'll definitely be catching some focus breathing, unfortunately. In front of the focus ring comes the aperture ring, which also turns smoothly and heavily, and the aperture mechanism has a large 13 iris blades to it. Finally comes the lens hood, which fits onto the front, but not very securely, I'm afraid. This one kept falling off my lens and my camera bag, which was really disturbing. Hopefully, Seven Artisans can tweak the tightness a little bit here, or you could just buy your own kind of lens cap for the front. The filter size is 58mm wide and the lens does not have image stabilisation or, as I mentioned, any electronic connection with your camera. Overall, well, this is a dead, dead simple lens. It does its job while feeling very tough and durable, but I do wish that focus ring were a little more precise. Alright, let's look at image quality now. I'll be testing the lens on my Sony a7R 3 with its full frame 42 megapixel sensor. No in-camera corrections are available with this lens. At f1.05, the middle of the image sees acceptable sharpness, and contrast is better than I expected also, but a little bit of purple fringing is visible on contrasting edges. Still, I was expecting things to be a little worse than this in all honesty. Let's have a look over in the corners. Ok, we are seeing softness and very low contrast here, but again, the picture is no worse than average for one of these extremely bright aperture lenses. You can at least make out what's going on, well, except right in the very edges. Stop down to f1.4 for a touch more sharpness in the corners and noticeably more contrast. Back in the middle, sharpness and contrast are now very impressive. Stop down to f2 for perfect image quality in the middle, and now the corners are definitely starting to look brighter and better. At f2.8, they look lovely and sharp except for the very edges. At f4, f5.6 and f8, we see further tiny improvements that lead to almost perfect image quality from corner to corner. If you stop down as far as f16 though, a touch of softness will creep in due to the physical effects of diffraction. Overall, this is the kind of image quality I've come to expect from a lens like this, although picture quality in the middle of your images does seem a little sharper than usual, even from the brightest apertures. Ok, let's look at distortion and vignetting now. Some good news is that the lens projects almost no distortion at all. Vignetting is rather heavy though, those corners look really dark at f1.05. Stop down to f1.4 or f2 and they brighten up fairly quickly, so really it's a better than average performance here. This lens can focus down to only 57cm, further than usual for a 50mm optic. Its close-up image quality is certainly a little softer, with lower contrast, 
but usually a cheap f0.95 lens will be a complete and utter disaster in this particular area, so again it's definitely better than average. At f1.4 and f2 everything gets much sharper, so that's actually quite pleasing to see. Now let's see how the lens works against bright light. Uh oh. We have a fairly serious slip up here, as the lens is displaying plenty of flaring and glaring of all different types. A bit of a shame, especially if you're doing critical nighttime photography. And while we're working in the dark, let's see about its coma levels. At f1.05, bright points of light in the image corners are definitely seeing some smearing and purple fringing, but again, I have seen worse than this before. f1.4 looks better, and at f2 that smearing is gone. Let's zoom out now and look for sun stars, even stop down to f16 you don't really get them with this lens, there are too many aperture blades. You do get increased issues with flaring though I'm afraid, the further you stop down. Well let's take a look at the lens's bokeh now, I was really impressed here, whenever I've tested 50mm f0.95 lenses, their bokeh has been all over the place with all kinds of awkward problems. On this lens, the out of focus backgrounds almost always look quite lovely and neutral, albeit with a little colour fringing on specular highlights. Speaking about that, let's take a proper look at longitudinal chromatic aberration. It is wild at f1.05 as you can see here. It's still there at f1.4 and f2, at f2.8 it's reduced, and at f4 it's finally gone. Well, pretty much anyway. Overall, this lens took me on quite a rollercoaster ride of technical image quality strengths and weaknesses. It's interesting to me that seven artisans chose to bring out this lens with its unusual maximum aperture. I think they chose to step back from f0.95 in order to squeeze just a little more image quality out compared to the competition, and in my books this is certainly noticeably better than its 50mm f0.95 competitors. It offers slightly lower distortion and vignetting, slightly better contrast, and far better, if still not perfect, close up image quality, not to mention considerably smoother bokeh too. I just wish it could focus a bit closer to your subject, and that it had a more precise focus ring, and that its flaring wasn't quite so bad. Still, this lens will provide you a good bit of fun for anyone willing to get to grips with manually focusing such a thing. I'd rather have this lens than any of the cheap 50mm f0.95 optics on the market, and for its low price of $400, that means it's decent enough value for money. If this is the kind of lens you're on the market for, and you understand and can handle its limitations, I can actually just about recommend it. Thanks for watching everyone, and what an interesting lens that turned out to be, I kind of liked it. It's just nice to see an improvement over the 4 or 5 50mm f0.95 lenses that I've tested so far. And something I'm constantly trying to improve is my Patreon page. Supporters over there make a big difference to me keeping this channel going and growing, and they get all kinds of exclusive bonus content too. Check it out, thanks for your support, and keep on trucking everyone.